All right, I see a mine right there. We are aiming for it. Let's see if we can get the collision right. Here we go. And there we are. Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and in today's video, we are back with recreating the disasters. And in today's video, we are focusing on the HMHS Britannic with a cameo from the Olympics. So yeah guys, let's get into the video. Now as you can see, the HMT or HMS Olympic has just pulled into port here in Southampton. Now, why are we in Southampton? Where are we going? And why is the Britannic a hospital ship? So yeah, the Britannic was the third and final ship of the Olympic class for the White Star Line. During her construction, she was actually requisitioned by the Royal Navy because World War I broke out and she was transformed into a hospital ship to transport wounded and sick soldiers. So that's what brings us up to now with the Britannic, but the Olympic also underwent a transformation and it was actually being transformed into a troop ship, which it actually successfully did without sinking and it would go on for many years. And fun fact, Jay Killen has a piece of the Olympic. So yeah, I actually own a fairly large section of a baseboard skirting that would be located in Olympic's Grand Staircase. And it actually does have remnants of green paint on it. And Olympic's Grand Staircase was actually painted to a green color in the 1930s before being scrapped. And you could see the remnants of the green paint still on this piece here. So yeah, I'll put up a couple photos that Jay Killen sent me of the piece of wood because it is really cool. It should be called an artifact really because it's from the Olympic. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get sailing, and where are we sailing to? Yeah, so for Britannic's sixth and last voyage, she departed from Southampton heading for Lemnos, but she would actually stop to refuel and uh, get a resupply of fresh water at the port of Naples. So anchors up, and we are away. We are leaving Southampton. Now, for this voyage, the Olympic really wouldn't be sailing alongside us, but at one point, the Olympic and the Britannic did sail somewhat together. So uh, you want to talk about that? Yeah, so for Britannic's first voyage as a hospital ship, she actually departed from Liverpool heading for Lemnos. And some ships that followed along the same route would include the Aquitania, the Mauritania, and the Olympic, like we have here. So yeah, that's really cool. And you're using the color scheme that would be used on the ship at that time, right? Yeah, this was before she got any kind of uh, dazzle camouflage. That would be until the late 1917, early 1918 when that would happen. Yeah, so we're actually sailing a ship that is really more modern than the Olympic. And the reason that it is that is because it's got all of these newer features and newer designs to it or alterations from the Olympic. So, Jay Killen, what were some of the alterations made to the Britannic that were not on the Olympic or Titanic? Oh my gosh, you're not going to believe what just happened. Uh, I see. I think you hit a mine. Yep, you are absolutely correct. All right, don't worry about that jump cut, folks. That was nothing. We're just leaning forward a little bit more. It didn't happen to be a mine that was strategically placed right in front of the ship. Anyways, we are continuing on now. Just ignore that. We'll get to that later. But, uh, yeah, what were some of the safety features on the Britannic that the Olympic or Titanic didn't really have? Yeah, so the main thing was uh, that's noticeable on the exterior is those large gantry davits that could actually house a lot of lifeboats in such a, uh, I guess, a tiny space, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you can see that there's a lot more boats stacked in that area, and they did work during the sinking. Actually, one did get jammed, but the rest were able to work fine. So that's really cool. But there were more safety features than just that, right? Uh, yeah, I believe so. So the Britannic actually had a double skinned hull or the double bottom was actually extended up and it followed along the side of the ship. Now, as you said, Jay Killen, Naples was really just a stopover port to refuel and stuff, right? Yeah, so she actually stopped to refuel with some coal and she replenished uh, some fresh water, I believe. Now, was she actually stopped there because of a storm? So yeah, before leaving, a storm actually rolled in, so she actually had to stay in port for a bit longer until the storm eventually passed, I believe. Wow, so that's pretty interesting. So we're actually making our way into port now, or well, we're going to see the port pop up or more of it in a minute, and we're just going to stay there until the morning. Now, hopefully when we get into port, we can basically fix our ship and make sure it's not leaning forward anymore from that mild accident we had, so yeah. All right, so here we are. We are fully docked up in Naples, and basically we're going to wait for the sunrise. We're going to sail out, and then we're going to recreate the sinking. So, uh, yeah. Now, Jay Killen, do you have any fun facts for us about the Britannic? 
Yeah, so a pipe organ was actually planned to be installed on Britannic's Grand Staircase, but because of the outbreak of the war, the instrument never made its way to Belfast from Germany. But after the war, it wasn't claimed by any ship, so it was originally thought that the organ was lost or destroyed. But in 2007, the restorers of a Welt organ, now in a museum in Switzerland, detected that the main parts of the instrument were signed by the German organ builders with Britannic, so there's actually proof that's uh, out there that this organ actually was meant to be on the Britannic. So yeah, that's really cool because you can actually find videos on YouTube of this organ being played. So Britannic's voice still kind of resonates today, except I don't think it ever played on Britannic. So I'm not sure. Maybe that would be the whistles then. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to get sailing here. I mean, it's almost morning. So uh, yeah, it'd be fitting. So let's get going. Now, while we're sailing here... Was the Britannic basically just scheduled to go from there to Lemnos? Yeah, it would go from Naples to Lemnos, and at this time, I don't think there were any patients on board, but she was heading to Lemnos to pick up uh, any patients or wounded soldiers, basically. Now, with that, there were a bunch of nurses on board, including Violet Jessup, who survived the collision with the Hawk on the Olympic, and the sinking of the Titanic, and she would also survive the sinking of this ship. The Britannic. Now the waters that the Britannic was in when she went down was the Kia Channel. This is basically between the island of Kia and another island off to the left. And it's sort of similar to how it is here. We got a big island off to the right and a small island off to the left. Luckily I've survived the uh, torpedo attack that usually happens from time to time over here. So that's good. Fun fact about that, some of the survivors actually believe that the Britannic was struck by a torpedo. So yeah, that's interesting. Oh, mine dead ahead. Here we go. This is it. All right, I see a mine right there. We're aiming for it. Let's see if we can get the collision right. Here we go. And there we are. Oh, this might actually work. So the collision has just occurred. We're taking on massive amounts of water. Now, the explosion was so violent on board the ship after the mine, it actually twisted the hull. And that was pretty bad for the Britannic because... Some of the watertight doors couldn't close. I believe like two of them couldn't close. And that let in a lot of water. I think into Boiler Room 5 as far as it went. So yeah, now the ship's going down and it's going down fast. You can see the props are now out of the water. The ship is going down very quickly. This is the end. We're about to see the funnel collapse here in just a moment. And I think it's going to get caught in that gantry davit there. There it goes. So the funnel just collapsed into the gantry davit. And I believe in real life it sort of did that underwater and it got basically caught in the gantry davit. That's why it's one of the only funnels laying next to the rack in real life. That is a super surreal view there. The ship is going down very quickly, and you can actually visibly see the water rushing up the deck and the people in the water too. And there she goes. She has just hit bottom, and she is on her side, which is actually really realistic. Now, Jay Killen, how many people actually died because of the sinking? Surprisingly, out of the thousand people or so that were on the ship, only 30 people ended up dying. During the evacuation, some people actually began launching lifeboats against the captain's orders because originally the captain was planning on trying to beach the ship. And after launching the lifeboats and as the ship was tilting out of the water a little bit, the, um, the port propeller was actually exposed. So some of these lifeboats actually drifted in and got mangled into the propellers and a lot of people actually got chopped up and killed. And one of those passengers in the boats was Violet Jessup. As I mentioned, she was a nurse on board. She didn't know how to swim, so she jumped overboard into the water to save herself. She got hit with something on her head, could have been a part of the lifeboat. Some say it's the propeller, but I doubt that because she'd probably be dead if that happened. And she lived! She actually, unfortunately, had to see severed body parts in the water because the boats were so badly sliced up with people in them. And that's awful to see. Now, she did survive the sinking of the Titanic, sinking of Britannic, obviously, and she survived the collision with the Hawk on the Olympic. So, yeah, she kind of is an expert at these things, and she reminds me of the more modern-day example of Moss Hills, who survived the sinking of the Achille Laro and Oceanos, except he didn't have to jump into the water after his lifeboat got sucked into a propeller, which is, I guess, better, but there you go. So, that was the sinking of the HMHS Britannic. If you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you soon, guys. Goodbye.